In this video, I'll walk you through the steps for finding any relative extrema, and you can find whether or not the relative extrema are relative maximums or minimums. So quick, before we get into this specific problem, we'll talk about a hypothetical one. And just, just showing you on the graph, if you have some, some graph like this, and it has a relative maximum here and a relative minimum here, you kind of get the idea. In this ballpark, this is the highest point. And in this ballpark, uh, in this small area, this is the lowest point. Um, something else you can notice here is that the slope, when you have a relative extrema, either a maximum or a minimum, the slope is zero. That tangent line of the function is zero. So as opposed to a positive slope right here, positive tangent, or a negative slope here, or over here it goes positive again. So after we find our uh, critical points, because the converse is not true, like we, we see here that if we have a relative extrema, we know that, um, that the slope is going to be zero. But just because the slope is zero doesn't mean that it's going to be a relative maximum or minimum. So for example, you might see a function like this, You've got a slope of zero there, uh, but it's not a, a relative maximum or minimum. It just, just flattens out there for a while. Okay, so what we do is we find our critical points. And the critical points, I'll make a little note here. The critical points of a function, that's where the first derivative equals zero, where the slope, remember the first derivative is the slope, so where the slope is zero. And again, that might not, it may not necessarily be a relative maximum or a minimum, like we see in this red graph, uh, but, but it's a good start, and then we'll do, we'll test that. Uh, there's a, another case where you can have a critical point, and that's where um, f prime of, of, of x does not exist. So if you have some function like this, there's this peak, we call it a corner in math language. That's a relative maximum, but but the uh, the first derivative does not exist there. So uh, so you have to test if you if you have a function and, and points on a, a function where the first derivative does not exist, you've got to test that as a critical point as well. Now we don't have to mess with that for this example given the function y equals x squared plus 4x minus 3, uh, that is differentiable everywhere. But we are going to find any relative extrema and state whether they are relative maximum, oops, maximums or minimums. So let's take the first derivative. y prime equals 2x plus 4. And then the next step is to say, when is that first derivative? equal to zero. When is the slope equal to zero? Well, it's when x equals negative two. So that's a critical point. Okay, this is our CP, critical point, when x equals negative two. And just to reiterate, that is when the slope equals zero. Now that may be a, a relative maximum or a relative minimum, uh, or maybe neither. Well, uh, we're going to test it here. So we make a little chart. And there's a, a few ways you can organize your, your thoughts here. But typically, the way it's, it's taught, so you'll see this in books, is that you have um, when x is less than negative 2, because you have this critical point. You have to test uh, to the left of it and to the right of it. So when x is less than not less than or equal to, just strictly less than negative 2, we're going to find the first derivative of some value when x is less than negative 2. We're also going to take a look at when x equals negative 2. And we already know the slope is 0. And we'll take a look at when x is greater than negative 2. So here's what we're doing. We're saying if this slope, if the slope goes from being positive to negative, we know we have a relative maximum. On the other hand, if the slope goes from being 
negative to positive, we know we have a relative minimum. So maximum if it goes from positive to negative, minimum if it goes from negative to positive. So that's a good visual look at, at what we're going to find um, with some calculus here. F prime of x. Okay, when x is less than negative 2, well, let's just test it real quick. We'll say, what happens when you have f prime of negative 3, some value less than negative 2? f prime of negative 3, we're plugging it into this function now. So 2 times negative 3 plus 4, that's negative 6 plus 4, equals negative 2. So the slope is negative. Slope is negative. The first derivative is negative. So it looks like we're in this area. If the slope comes up positive when x is greater than negative 2. Again, this is, this is not the graph of, of this function. I was just giving a general graph. Uh, by the way, you'll see this in plenty of books, and other calculus teachers will say this. Uh, rather than saying the slope is negative, or in addition to say the, saying the slope is negative, they will say the function is decreasing, which is absolutely true. So when you, you might see questions written like that. Slope is negative, same thing as saying the function is decreasing. We're going from higher to lower. Okay, I'm going to reserve a spot for x equals negative 2, and now let's test when x is greater than negative 2. So, f prime of 0. If you can test 0, usually that's an easy thing to test. So, I'm going to plug in 0 again for that first derivative in for x. So, 2 times 0 plus 4. So, f prime of 0 is 4. So, the slope is positive. So, what we have is going from a negative to a positive slope. Again, this is not the graph of, of the function. I'll draw a little sketch of it of this function in a second, but I'm just showing we have a slope going from negative to positive, so therefore, therefore, drum roll, we have a relative minimum, relative minimum at x equals negative 2. Now, be careful if, again, if you're uh, taking a computer test uh, graded test or, or multiple choice it might s ask you what is the relative minimum and in that case you would have to plug it in so f of negative 2 equals negative 2 quantity squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 3 and what is that 4 minus 8 plus 3 looks like negative 7 negative 7. So you'd say the relative, uh, you have a minimum of of y equals negative 7 at x equals negative 2. So, so uh, a rough sketch. I promised you a rough sketch of this, and I don't want to go back on my promise. So we have the points there. Negative 2 and negative 7 are the coordinates promised you a rough sketch. That's about right here. And here you go. It's a relative minimum. So it comes in as a negative slope, leaves as a positive slope.